short answer to that question today is if I could pull an old planter out of the iron pile and put one new technology on it, it'd be downforce. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Across the Tailgate. I'm Adam Gittins with HTS Ag, and with me today is Mike Lage. Mike, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, Adam. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm a regional sales agronomist for Midwest Seed Genetics. Uh, work in uh, corn product development a little bit uh, as part of my job as well, and uh, do a little bit of district biz business management too. We all kind of wear a lot of hats here, so uh, appreciate having, being uh, here with you today. Yeah, so Mike, we're, uh, we're out here today got the planter out we're getting ready to put it in the shop do a little bit of uh, last minute touch-ups on the planter before we head to the field this spring and uh, you brought me over a load of seed today yep and so we were just having a conversation and talking a little bit about planters and uh, how the, all of that plays in Mike I know over the years uh, you've looked at a lot of planters you've scouted a tremendous amount of acres yep. and, and from an agronomic perspective if guys could do one thing to make their planter better, what would that be? You know, it's a it's a good it's a great question. And with technology, and you and I have known each other for what twenty some years, and that answer has probably changed over time. And I remember, I don't know, a few years back when you were beta testing the first downforce just over the hill over here. Yeah. And uh, you said, "Watch, I'm going to turn this on," and uh, riding behind you in a four wheeler, and those row units just went level, right over no tilled corn ground. And that was really the first time that I ever got to see this down down force in action. And uh, as you said, I walk a lot of corn, see a lot of different planters. We plant several te test plots a year for corn and soybeans. And uh, so as the an short, short answer to that question today is if I could pull an old planter out of the iron pile and put one new technology on it, it'd be down force. So Mike, uh, down force, of course, we've done a ton of research over the years. Like you said, I beta tested it on my farm. What do you think, uh, as we, we look through the data, what do you think really jumps out as being the, the, the thing that makes the yield there? What, what benefit are we seeing from that downforce specifically that guys maybe don't have dialed in otherwise? Well, you know, for, for a long time, we've really been hyper-focused on spacing, right? You gotta have that quote unquote picket fence stand. Sure. And I don't disagree with that. I think that's every bit as important and having singles and not doubles and, and uh, not triples and all those are really important. But what we see and what we strive for within our company is to deliver a really high quality seed product, really high warm germs, really high cold germs. It's a standard for our company. And you pay a good amount of money for a bag of corn. All your customers, our joint customers, they do the same. Sure. And, you know, whether or not you should, you assume quality. But what we now know, and you talk about data, and we're now able to quantify things in ways we weren't even able to do five or ten years ago. We're collecting so much data. And if you really look at the data and really look at the data, and then go out and get your boots dirty and look and dig, and you see uh, Iowa State came out with some really interesting information here a couple years ago that a two-day delay in emergence is good for about 100 kernels. Wow. So you extrapolate that to what corn prices are today in $5 corn and, and how important it is. And we strive to deliver a product to you so that every corn plant looks like every other corn plant. You know, we want it to come up as close together as we possibly can and avoid that, avoid that corn plant being delayed, that two-day delay. Uh, the, the delay at three days and four days, you know, after that, you're, you're a weed. And you think about some of these tougher hills we've got here, the big river bottom and the clays. Uh, we've got a tremendous amount of variability and the ability for that planter to not only, and what I like about your system, is it not only reacts down, it also reacts up. Sure. You know, so we don't have delay coming up either because that can be just as bad. If we're plowing and, and digging into the mud, we're, we're ruining seed beds and, and doing more things to, to, hurt, to hurt that emergence. And uh, I just think it's a it's a remarkable technology to see to see those seeds placed uh, where they need to be in the ground. That is so critical to get them to come up at the same time is to get them at the right the right depth and the right moisture and the right temperature, so they all come up together. And that's ultimately what we want. So uniform emergence really comes back to uniform depth. And so with the hydraulic downforce, we're able to maintain that uniform depth in any soil type in any conditions 
you know, with 200 readings per second that the Ag Leader system takes mm -hmm. and to be able to adjust that quickly. Now, I know you've been across a lot of different systems, a lot of different planners. So I don't want to make this a commercial for Ag Leader products, but uh, talk about um, talk about what else you've seen out there. You know, are are active air systems as good as hydraulic? And, and we'll just we'll we'll stick brand neutral on this. Just if we're looking at an air system versus mm -hmm. hydraulic, what are your what's your thoughts on that? You know, so I think you know let's let's go back to the beginning in springs. Sure. I still work with a lot of customers that have springs on their machines. And springs are okay if you set them right. Um, the wrong springs, uh, some of the the T-handle type springs that really, they just vary so much row to row. They're not, the machine quality is not as good on those. And there's so much variability spring to spring and row to row. And I am less of a fan of those. The airbag systems were a big improvement over sure over springs right um and, and now the the downforce the hydraulic downforce in my mind and and the way it reacts and not only like i said before the downforce is so important but the able the, to be able to react and let it lay off the pressure too uh i think is equally important um i think it's just a progression of technology and i think it's great that you know you've got a behind that pallet of seed is a pallet of new parts to put on this thing so we're we're always changing and trying to learn and do better and 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 you know make step changes in this in this process of getting this corn to come up at the same time and it's uh you know i think the the hydraulic downforce to me is is probably the neatest innovation that i've seen on a planner um for that reason sure so mike last year specifically just over the hill here from where we're standing we put in a test plot with this planner and this has got the sure speed system on it mm -hmm. We put in, I forget how many numbers, but a lot. A lot, because you said you wanted a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and that backfired on me a little it, bit at harvest time. <laughs> it, it did. Uh, <laughs> the good side of that is we were able to collect a lot of data yep. and in a number of different ways. So one of the yep. things that we collected was a tremendous amount of different seed sizes, mm -hmm. seed shapes. Mm -hmm. um, we had rounds, we had flats, we had big, we had small, we had mm -hmm. everything in between. And the performance of that, that I know you spent a lot of time walking that plot. Mm -hmm. And even though this is a high speed planner, um, per your request, I slowed the planner down to plant the plot. I appreciate that. And then on both sides of the plot, we went and screamed to pass in about as hard as I could go. <laughs> yeah, right. So talk to me a little bit about your thoughts there and what you saw. Were you able to pick out where those passes were based on speed? You know, based on visually with my eyes, with this system, no, um, in all fairness. Um, I am, as an agronomist, I have a hard time s still recommending going fast. Right. Um, because not every system is the same. And I think it's kind of like, uh, you know, for those of us who remember the, the Sony Walkman or whatever, it was a brand, right? And everybody thought a tape player was a tape player. And I see a lot of assumptions. Well, I have downforce on my planner so I can go 10 miles an hour. Sure. And maybe I have a belt delivery system and a meter that allows me to simulate at 10 miles an hour. And your system absolutely does that. Others do as well. And they're very, very good at simulating it. However, you ride behind one of those planters, put a test plot in yeah. at eight, nine, 10 miles an hour. And the agronomist in you that's going to evaluate new products starts to cringe a little bit. Sure. Because when you see your row units doing this, you know that if the same thing is happening at the foot of the planter where the seed's going in the ground. And when you can see it, you know, that's probably an inch of variability. And that, that can be the difference in that plant coming up at the same time and two days later. And uh, so I think regardless of the system, I think it's important to, you know, the setting. And I think all these things now, it's, you know, these machines need an operator, not a driver. And I think all the technology is still a little bit dependent on who's running it too. And uh, so not to, to disparage any technology that's out there, but I think there are advantages over some of them. Uh, again, the ability to come up with the same speed as you can go down, I think is important. Um, uh, but overall, I, I the downforce is probably my favorite technology, but I still am, I'm still reluctant to make the recommendation to go fast. But if you are gonna go fast, if I can't, if I can't get your hand off the throttle, please have hydraulic downforce on your planter. It's a, they are, they, they go together. They have to go together. Sure. 
And so I've long said the cornerstone of a high, a high speed planner is hydraulic downforce. Airbags don't react quick enough, even an active air system. So Mike, I, I wanna kind of close up this topic thinking about this of, we're in Southwest Iowa and, and I don't think that's necessarily unique. This same topic would carry across yep. probably all of the Midwest. We've got a lot of variability and a lot of soil types and even man-made created variability. I've got a 30 foot wide planter. And if I come in and I wanna till um, the grass next to a terrace to bring the grass back and I make one pass that's a 25 foot wide pass there, I don't even have a full planter width that I'm making a tillage pass on. What, what is the penalty if we have a static system that we set X amount of downforce and it's right in this spot of the field but it's not in these other nine mm -hmm. spots in the field. What's the penalty from that? Well, it's both too much and too little. Kind of talk through that, and, and what what are our penalties there? Well, and, and like you say, it's the, it's the, and that's going to vary on every field and every every tillage or every variant in that farm, and your knowledge as the grower and the operator of the machine both, um, to know how big of a how big of a penalty or how much of a cost is there going to be to me. If I, if I am static and I don't stop that machine and I don't get out and I make adjustments that I need to make, um, you know, am I okay with that? You know, there's a cloud coming. I'm going to kick it up a gear. Everybody does it. Right. Um, we all do. Um, what's that going to cost me? Is it really worth getting that field planted or getting that extra 10 acres before the deluge comes? Is it worth it? to have the planter bounce a little more or have my spacing be um, not not ideal. Uh, what we were talking earlier, we get one chance to do this, right? Yeah. You know, I know some of us do it two and three times, but none of us want to do that. And you're, you're behind, you're way behind when you're doing that. Yeah. So I think here we are, it's March, middle of March, right? We're less than 30 days away from planting in some cases, right? Um, I mean, now's the time to get these things tuned up. Let's get them tuned up now, not while we're trying to plant. Uh, we know what we need to do, uh, but it's so important. If we're farming today, you're paying you're paying you're paying a, a good chunk of money for for your quality seed. That's you're 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 buying the best from me to maximize your yield on your farm. Right. So that's part of the step. The next step is let's get that in the ground so we can do what it's been bred to do for you. Right. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's like, uh, I don't, I, I don't know a, a, an analogy to compare it to, but it's just, to, to me, it's, it's, it's my life and what I see every day. And I am, the older I get, I, I, I guess I feel like I probably am becoming a little bit more opinionated, but, uh, um, it's so important, you know, it's so frustrating for me as an agronomist, you know, sadly, if the corn, if something doesn't, if something's not right, you know, eh, there's something wrong with your seed, right? Well, lots of times it's, <coughs> excuse me, it's, uh, you know, maybe it was a grain cart path the fall before. Sure. Or maybe uh, where the anhydrous tanks went in the wheel tracks. Um, you know, usually it's not the seed. It usually comes back to conditions of planting, planter settings, so important. And I would even I would <laughs> expand on that just a little bit, Mike. We talked a lot about technology and kind of focused on that, but all of the technology in the world on this planner is not going to correct for the very basic things of having a good set of true V's, yep. the, the bearings working right, everything in line and doing what we need it to do. So don't overlook the simple things on the planner yep. and uh, we can have a real good spring and get that seed in the ground and get us off to a good start. Absolutely. Well, Mike, I'll, I want to thank you for spending a little time chatting with me today on Across the Tailgate. Thanks for having and, me. And, uh, you know, I'm sure you'll be back across my fields and maybe we'll chat again some other time. I hope so. I appreciate it. Thanks. All right. Yep. Thanks, Mike.